And we're back. I promised ladder games. Let's jump right in. I'm sort of near the top of gold at the moment. Rank 6. Um, hopefully that's a reasonable testing ground. I took this deck for a total of one spin last night. It won. Um, Alright. Lionar. Lionar. Probably another sort of mid-rangey deck. They tend to play large creatures. Often with Provoke. Often with Divine Bond backing them up. So what have we got? Um, this is not a bad hand to start with actually. We can probably afford to keep this Dancing Blades when we're going second, although ideally our turn 3 would include an activation of the Bloodborne spell, so we won't necessarily be able to play it. But the card is good enough that it might be worth holding onto. We've got a Blazehound to play on turn 1. We've got a Chromatic Hold. Hmm, this is a pretty reasonable catch-all. It's okay, I think I'd rather have a Cryogenesis. I'm definitely mulliganing the second Blazehound. I think I want to keep the Primus, because we can just play it on turn 2, no questions asked. Against Lionar, this doesn't destroy all that much. It is quite good at mitigating some of their powerful 2-drops. Um, but I think we can live without it for the time being. Alright, this is somewhat better. So this, this can remove, this Saber Spine Tiger can remove one of the strong Lionar 2 drops outright. Um, as can Blood Tear Alchemist plus Kara hitting it in the face. That's the right line. So this is one of the strong 2 drops I was talking about. Um, this card is very scary on the first turn. I'm not sure whether we're meant to just kill it straight away. I think I prefer the line of just playing the Blaze Hunt. Um, so the first thing I want to do, I want to move forwards. Um, Generally, you want to be positioned near the centre of the board in the opening turns in Duelist, and moving two forwards is almost always the thing you're going to do, whether you're going first or second, because these mana tiles are worth contesting, and you don't want to give up too much ground to your opponent, you want room to manoeuvre. So we can play the Blazehound sort of here, in a relatively defensive position where the opponent cannot kill it, but it also won't be able to take any mana tiles. We can play it here just to deny them this mana tile. Uh, but they can't really make great use of it this turn. We can play it here to try and take the top mana tile, assuming our opponent lets it live. Uh, which they may do if they use... Oh no, they can, you can use the Azerite Lion to take the bottom mana tile and then still kill the Blazehound. Uh, and then play something on this tile. Um, so I think I'm just going to take this now. I don't think we're going to be able to use it ourselves. Let's see what we draw. Okay, that's this is an okay draw. I think I'm going to replace it. I was saying about replacing the Vespers earlier, and I think I'll just have to leave it at that. I don't think we want to use the Blood Tear Alchemist yet. We can use it next turn to kill the Azeroth Lion if he leaves it near Kara. So what have we got? Lasting Judgment. Our Blazehound is dead, long live our Blazehound. Here comes Azeroth Lion for the attack, and that's also a scary. Eep. Okay, so this looks pretty bad, but we can actually kill everything. Uh, just based on our hand. Um, so, decent options include playing the Primus Shieldmaster. Um, it will just instantly die, so I think we can discount that one. Uh, we can save a Spine Tiger, the Windblade Adept, move up, play something here. Well, it'll be the Blood Tear Alchemist. Uh, we can't kill the Azeroth Lion if we do that. Um, we can replace something. Let's let's replace something first. It's normally better to replace first. This Repulsor Beast isn't doing much yet, although it is quite good against Iron Cliff Guardians. I think I'll replace this Hailstone Golem. Ooh. So that's not bad. Uh, although it can only kill one of these with Kara's attack. Um, our opponent has left us in quite an awkward spot here. I think I might just go for the plan of kill everything in order to mitigate damage to ourselves. So we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to put this Blood Tear Alchemist sort of out the way, so that it has a chance of contributing to the battle next turn. I'm going to ping the Azeroth Lion. I'm going to move forwards, so that I'm pressuring Argian and sort of blocking his access to this side of the board a little bit, and I'm going to kill the Lion. So we've just traded some resources. We've got a small amount of value, since we've got this Blood Tear Alchemist, which Argian can't obviously remove, and we've turned off his raw, which is very important. Um, 
so we're not doing too badly here. Um, this turn, oh, not taking the monotile unless he's going to play something behind him, which would be reasonable. Maybe we'll see a Dialtas, yeah. Dialtas with Raw, that's very scary. We do have a Repulsor Beast, so we can sort of punt it to the middle of nowhere, which might be a reasonable plan. Uh, we also drew another Saber Spine Tiger last turn, so we can just kill it and start working on the thing that comes out of it. Or we can play this Dancing Blades. Um, this, is a, this is the sort of situation where Dancing Blades really shines. Uh, it does mean we can't use our Bloodborne spell this turn. I would be... What of this die? I should probably replace something. Possibly the Frostbone Naga. She's not that great in this matchup. Cryogenesis. That's a very good draw. Um, I think, given that we have the Dancing Blades and it is 3 health, I think I'm just going to use that. Um, this Blood Tear Alchemist is basically guaranteed to die next turn, but at least it eats up Arjun's activation. Um, I think I... So the, the choice is basically to move the Alchemist or move Kara. Um, or I can move Kara here, actually, which sort of gives me a good range of options. I want to be in position to attack the token that comes out of Dialtes. Okay, so I can attack it with this. Um, that's kind of an okay place for it to spawn. Um, we are predominantly afraid of Divine Bond here. It is fortuitous that if the opponent plays Divine Bond on the tombstone and hits this, we can finish it off with Cryogenesis, assuming they don't have some sort of heal. Uh, we can also just Repulsor it in an emergency. Oh, we do another Dancing Blades? Spicy! So as predicted, the Blood Tear Alchemist is going to cop it. Oh, this might be a Divine Bond to the face. Oh wow, what's this? Holy Immolation! Bar Humbug. That makes me sad. So... This is pretty bad for us. Um, in terms of damage. So the question is, what do we do now? We can remove this using Cryogenesis, Saber Spine Tiger, attack it, attack it, if we absolutely have to. I don't think that's worth it, somehow. Um, I want to Repulsor Beast it, but I'm not sure what else we're doing with our mana this turn. So I think either way we have to replace. This Dancing Blades is quite big and quite strong. I am tempted to replace it just because we have this Cryogenesis, or I could replace the Cryogenesis and get more value out of the spell. So I think I'm going to do that. Healing Mystic, okay. So now we can play Repulsor Beast plus Healing Mystic and just get some nice pressure in front of Arjun here. Um, where do I want my stuff? There's so many decisions in Duelist. Like, I can play the Repulsor Beast basically anywhere that's adjacent to this thing. I want to play around a second Holy Immolation, because the opponent can play a 2-drop and, and then Immolate. There's no real good way to do that beyond spreading out diagonally. Um, I don't know if that's massively worth it. So I think I'll just play this here. Punt that. Play a healing mystic. Um, yeah, let's spread out because of things like Iron Cliff Guardian as well. Uh, and I'm just going to move Kara. I think she can stay where she is, actually. Oh, well, I ran out of time, so that'll... <laughs> she's staying where she is. Um, narration always takes a little bit of time. So you can see how we've played a couple of minions that would be very underwhelming. Like, this would just instantly die. But now they have genuinely respectable bodies, and we have quite a lot of power on the board. We are going to have to deal with this at some point, but we can just kind of go over and kill it later. So this looks like an Iron Cliff. Sunbloom, okay. Well, our opponent has spent a card on removing the buffs, so even if this insta dies, we're still okay with that. Because this Repulsor Beast basically traded with the Sunbloom. Another one? Really? Okay. So I'm very tempted to just Dancing Blades that again. Um, and the question is, do we? what do we replace? I'm kind of tempted to hold on to this in favour of the Cryo, just because it can get bigger again in the future and sticks around getting more valuable now. So I think I'm going to replace the Cryo and hope for an Ephemeral Shroud. Another kitty. That's not very useful. Um, <clears throat> so options are, we 
kill this with Kara plus the Mystic, play a 4-7 Provoke, uh, play the cat and attack the new token. Um, that leaves it on 6 health, which is not great with raw Divine Bond, probably leaves Kara in something of a state. I do like playing this though, so I think I'm going to play the Tiger and trade with the Dialtas, and then just wail on the token with everything in range. And hope not to get ruined by another Holy Immolation. Um, so I'm going to play this minion here. And I'm going to play the Primus Shieldmaster out of the way of the Dialtas token, so that it doesn't get caught by Immolation. I guess another option would have just been to kill it. Wow, this cryogenesis just can't leave me behind. Quality. Um, yeah, we could have played this, or even like buffed and played this, but I think I... Oh, there it is. So the opponent's in pretty good shape at this point. Not drawing any uh, ephemeral shrouds has been a bit sad. Um, and we're going to have to deal with these Dialtas is now... Oh, there it goes. Oh boy. My poor, poor life total. Okay, so we can remove this now with Cryogenesis and the Tiger. Um, can't think of any better way to do that. If we draw a... If we replace into an Ephemeral Shroud, we can kill it with the Primus. I think I'm going to use the Cryogenesis, replace whatever comes out, and hope to hit a Dispel. Boo! Boo, I say. So I guess we Tiger it, rather than using this, because this is more valuable. Um, this is very sad. Silly Lionar, spoiling all the funds. Uh, yep, yeah, I don't think there's a good alternative to that. Such a waste of a 5-4 kitty as well. So sad. I'm gonna hop over here, so that I'm further away from this thing, in case our opponent has another Divine Bond. Uh, I guess I attack? Um, just because, like, we're under some trouble if this thing dies, but we're also under trouble in the first place, because the life total is not looking good right now. Um, so I don't think we're very likely to win this. I think we do. if we do win this, it's by it's not by not attacking with this uh, Primus Shieldmaster. Okay, if they don't have another Divine Bond or another Holy Immolation, we might make it out of this. Scratch everything I just said. So, Arjun's position is awkward because he's obviously playing around these Dancing Blades. Um, oh my. You know what I said about Vanar not having good area of effect? This is uh, now something of an issue. Okay, so let's replace one of these. More. That would be great if this was an early game situation and I had a little life to spare, but I do not. I think I'm gonna... I don't think it matters very much when I activate this. I'm gonna activate this for a 5 power blaze hunt. Um, let's play it down here. Dispel! <laughs> I can dispel one thing, what is it? Um, how does this, how do I survive? Is there a way that I can survive? I can't stay where I am because I'm just going to die to all of this nonsense. Um, I think I have to... So I have to, I'm basically obliged to dispel this. So that I can run away from it. I can run away as far as here. I can play the more to block a little space. I don't think that's enough, but it might help. Um, I can hit this with it, so that if this attacks Kara, it dies, and I'm obliged to kill this Windblade Adept, I think. Um, this gives me, like, some very slim odds of not losing. Uh,
<laughs> we do have a mahoosive dancing blades. So that kills them more. Our mid-range deck is getting firmly out mid-ranged here. So the shroud kills that. He is on nine. Could work still. He's going to play another massive provoke, isn't he? And I'm going to be sad. Yup. It's behind me. Okay. Oh my. Sad times. How do we get out of this? <laughs> I wish I had my massive kitty back. Uh, so I can still remove this if I use the dancing blades. Um, I'm going to struggle to not die in the meantime, so... I think I'll replace this blaze hound in the hope of like a cryogenesis. Woo! That does act. Oh no, it doesn't keep me alive because he can uh, use Argian to kill me. <laughs> oh. No. No, I'm just dead. So, I guess maybe I can. No, that doesn't help either. So, my thinking was I cryo the healing mystic, dancing blades this. Actually, what I can do is. Dancing Blades the Healing Mystic, Cryo this, um, and then in theory I can block space with the Ephemeral Shroud. If I had enough mana, if I had one more mana I would theoretically be able to live. However, I can only block off one of these spaces and then Arjun comes around the corner and it plus the Iron Cliff kill me. So that is GG. Um, but that was pretty close. I think if we'd drawn um, Ephemeral Shroud earlier, we possibly would have won. I don't know, but I, it's hard to say probably, but those Dioltas tokens did so much work. Um, you know, because it was what allowed him to get that massive Divine Bond burst off that left us on very low health uh, and forced us to play really defensively. So let's run it back. Let's try again. Abyssian A. This is sort of this is not a great matchup for us either. Um, we are at least going second, which is helpful against Shadow Novas. Um, so let's see. They are unlikely to be playing much by way of Swarm, which makes Blood Tear Alchemist less good. It also dies to Casimir's Hero Power and gives them a Shadow Creep tile. So I think I'm going to mulligan that. Nothing wrong with having a. 4-6 that we can play on turn 2, and we can even play a Sojourner on turn 1, which is very resistant to our opponent removing it with things like Demonic Lure. And then we have this as well, card advantage flows. So I think I might actually replace the Healing Mystic, because we have a really nice plan of this or this into this. Um, aha! Now you show up. Against the Bissian, I'm definitely holding on to the Shroud. They have things like that that are quite good to just remove. So I'm kind of tempted to play the Sojourner aggressively here. Our opponent can't do that much to punish it. They can have Demonic Lure, but that draws us cards. Actually, the only problem with playing Sojourner aggressively is that the opponent can make us overdraw, and we waste some of the potential of Sojourner. I don't know if I want to replace any of these cards. Um, I'm really looking to play this next turn, so I'm sort of tempted to replace the Cryogenesis. Um, there's maybe a world where we play like 2-3 Dispel this, but I don't think that's worth doing. Um, no, I think I'm going to play the Sojourner sort of out the way. Um, this is quite a passive play, but it's really good for letting us just get a bunch of cards. Actually, I'm going to replace the Cryogenesis if I'm playing Sojourner, because they sort of compete for space. They both draw cards. I think I'm going to play this here so that I can kill the um, Abyssal Crawler with it at some point. Well, more is good. Having more on Ephemeral Shroud in hand is good, because it lets us more easily deal with whatever the opponent plays here next turn. Um, because I assume they will take this Mana Tile to avoid us being able to play a Dancing Blades. Game is hard, yo. So, just to catch up, you may or may not have seen Cassava before. Um, 
uh, Cassava generally plays a very late game control deck with a card called Shadow Nova that fills an area with damaging tiles and the damage is equal to the damage of each tile is equal to the number of such tiles on the board. Um, oh, this is interesting. Spectral Blade. Are we going to see a dem We're not going to see a Demonic Lure. That's a very strange play. Um, what are they trying to accomplish? So I think it makes a fair amount of sense for us to just move forward, attack Cassava with our face. We do take damage, but it knocks a charge off the Spectral Blade, which is quite a powerful artifact. Play a Dancing Blades here to kill this. It's kind of overkill, but it puts the Dancing Blades down. Uh, possibly, so the Sojourner will be removed by the Bloodborne spell next turn, which is a little awkward. I think we're going to ship away this Blaze Hunt. Another more. So the options are basically play the one large thing or play the multiple smaller things that don't um, that die to Spectral Blade. And because we want to keep a good mass of cards in hand and because of them just dying to Spectral Blade and giving our opponent free value um, or even to her hero power. I'm going to play the Dancing Blades even though it is sort of overkill. Um, I then I think want to move this over here and attack the opponent's face. She will probably kill the Sojourner. The question is, do we get the hit in before she potentially dispels it? I think we don't. I think we pass. I think the risk of the opponent dispelling Sojourner is there, but it's not too bad. She can't Zenru it because her access to both mana tiles is blocked. So she's quite likely to just hit it and ping it with the Bloodborne spell, which keeps her mostly in place, it means she can only move to one of these two squares um, and you know, draws us a card still so it's a demonic lure yeah, that's fine I am more than happy to remove my opponent's card and then trade my 4-6 for a demonic lure that doesn't even kill it so that's pretty good value for us um, running Cassava out of cards is not necessarily practical just because Shadow Nova doesn't really care how many cards you have in the rest of your hand, and they have a lot of ways to draw up cards anyway. Oh, that's interesting. Spending a card just to deal us three. So she's probably holding something like Right of the Undervolt, which draws a number of cards equal to the number of spaces in your hand, um, and is just looking to empty out her hand. Um, did I just draw two cards instead of one? How did that happen? That was strange. That weird interaction. Battle log does not reveal. Interesting. Okay, so our life total is looking a bit precarious here, uh, to the point where I'm sort of considering running the Saber Spine Tiger in, just to get rid of the Spectral Blade without having to use our life total to do that. Um, and we can take the Mana Tile in the process too, which is even better. I think we're going to replace one of these Moors, because it's a card you don't really need two of. Yeah, I sort of like that play. It does mean that the the tiger just dies, but it clears the blade. Um, I don't think Kara really wants to be at 14 here. Um, because Abyssians can do quite large amounts of damage. So I think I'm going to walk this way. Um, play a cat. Attack. Play the Crystal Cloaker over here and bring the Dancing Blades back. Oh, a Healing Mystic. That's quite good. So she can still nip down and take this. Um, we should try and deny her that ability next turn because either essentially either make her use it now or um, take it from her next turn so that she can't play Shadow Nova next turn. If she gets the 7 mana, that's very sad for us. So this might be an attempt to protect this mana tile. Spelljammer! Drawing us more cards. Luring that way. Mm -mm. So opponent is not doing a whole lot. 
Um, but they are buying time reasonably successfully. So we have a couple options. We can play this 5-7 and kill this with more, kind of like that play. Um, we can dispel this, we can ignore it and let it draw us more cards. Um, we can repulsor it, I think. This is a good thing to have in case our opponent has a Vorpal Reaver, although it doesn't do that much against Re Vorpals, and we do have this. I kind of do want to keep hold of all these cards just because Healing Mystic gaining two life is quite relevant. I think I like this line. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to take this Monotile with a nice big beefy minion. I'm going to play more down here, uh, just so my minions are a bit more spread out. Might as well start playing around Shadow Nova now. Um, and Kassava can't get at it with her attack plus Bloodborne spell. And I'm going to run these guys sort of back to this, uh, back to fighting stations. And I think I'll hold on to all of these. So opponent is now going to look to set up for Shadow Nova. Aha! Called it! Okay, what do we do about that? We don't want this Blaze Hound because digging Cassava towards the specific cards that she wants is generally very bad for us. So I quite like the combination of Ephemeral Shroud plus Repulsor Beast. We can make this kind of useless and put it over there and then move to surround the opponent and get some damage in. Um, another option is to repulse the Reaver over here and trade with it. I don't think that's very efficient. Um, yeah, I think let's just do that. So, I'm gonna move in. I'm gonna... I want my minions to be as spread out as possible. So I'm gonna move Kara here. I'm gonna put the... Oh, they do both need to be next to the thing, don't they? Let's go over here. Wham! Let's have... these are both the same size. Let's have the Shroud... Dispel it. The Repulsor Beast... Punt it over there. Um, these guys are going to keep moving. And... I think more might just stay where it is. So I'm trying to spread out to mitigate the damage caused by the Shadow Nova. Ah, oh, they conceded! Awesome! We spread out and put a whole bunch of massive stuff on the board that the opponent wasn't happy dealing with, and then we won! Right according to plan. Okay, that was pretty good. I'm gonna send my opponent some gold. There's a apology for the sheer amount of beef we just deployed. Um, I have to say that Dispel plus Repulsor play, that felt really good. That was not a lot of mana for two 4-4s four and removing a 6-6 six six with lots of text. So the the wonder of Kara, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed this and found it as entertaining as I did doing it. Um, please let me know on Reddit. Um, my username is the same as in-game, son of Makuta, um, or on YouTube or wherever, uh, what you thought and what you'd like to see in future. Don't be a stranger. Um, this has been all your basics. Oh, I can afford a pack. I'm going to crack a pack on, on stream. Look at this. Well, not on stream, but you know what I mean. Value right there. Let's see what we get. you gotta, you got to rub it run, right? Do we crack anything good? That is... Yes! Whoa! As far as rarities go, that's one of the most stacked packs I've ever had. You guys brought me luck. Look at this. This is fantastic. We've got a huge... Songhai Beta. I, I play this in my Songhai deck. It's pretty great. It's wonderful with Mist Dragon Seal. You play the Ham Seeker in their face. They demonic lure it away, and then you teleport it back and you hit them. This I don't think I previously owned. That's pretty awesome. I hear this combo as well with um, Arctic Displacer, the ten four with Airdrop. You play that behind them, and then you play Spirit of the Wild, and they die. This is good. I've actually been considering putting Sworn Avenger in some of my decks to fill up my three slot just because it's basically a neutral Widowmaker that can snowball really hard as the game goes on. This, I have never played
played. I've played against it once and it seemed really good. And this is one of the grossest things to put on a 1-1 one, one range token from a Jaxi ever. Awesome. What a sweet pack. Uh, thank you for bringing me all of your beautiful, beautiful luck. Right, I'm going to wrap it up. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Please don't hesitate to let me know what you thought, what you'd like to see, if you have any questions or clarifications or anything like that. Um, for the more experienced among my audience, please let me know the many, many times I misplayed during those games, but uh, <laughs> hopefully not too egregiously. And um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.